Hello, my name is Daniel. I'm a professional actor living in Lethbridge, a creative and resilient little city nestled into the coolies amidst the vast prairie landscape of Alberta. This city, its people and views have stolen my heart over the years, much like the works and words of a certain poet, William Shakespeare. Welcome to Thy Bard Shakes On It, where I sit down with a handful of local Lethbridge artists like myself to both shake down and shake up a handful of Shakespeare's age-old sonnets. Each artist and I will discuss a single sonnet over the course of an episode before creating our very own in the next. In this episode, we are shaking down none other than William Shakespeare's 15th sonnet. But we needn't do so alone. Oh, oh, oh no. Please join me in welcoming <coughs> Katrina Violet. Violet. <laughs> Katrina Violet was born in Saskatchewan, but the prairies of southern Alberta will always hold a sweet spot in her soul. She graduated from the University of Lethbridge in 2020 with a BFA in Dramatic Arts Performance. She's an emerging queer actor and director in the theatre industry, fascinated by the complexities of human connection. She believes theatre is ephemeral, vulnerable and real, provoking long-lasting conversations with infinite potential. Thank you so much for being here with me, Katrina. Um, and thank you to everybody tuning in. I do want to take a moment to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 7 territory, which is also home to Métis Nation Region 3. Let's dive in and read Sonnet 15 in its entirety. When I consider everything that grows, holds in perfection but a little moment, that this huge stage presenteth naught but shows whereon the stars in secret influence comment, when I perceive that men as plants increase, cheered and checked even by the self-same sky, vaunt in their youthful sap at height decrease, and wear their brave state out of memory, then the conceit of this inconstant stay sets you most rich in youth before my sight, where wasteful time debateth with decay to change your day of youth to sullied night, and all in war with time for love of you. As he takes from you, I engraft you new. So what do you take from this sonnet overall? What, do you, what does it kind of mean to you, just generally speaking? My general takeaway is um, kind of related to immortality and beauty and time and love and how you can kind of freeze something in time into a poem. Mm. It's also so raw and vulnerable to write mm. something about someone yeah. and have it. I mean, I don't know if Shakespeare knew that he was going to be writing things that we would bring into this century, right. but like this has withstood the test of time. Let's dive into stanza one here, lines one through four, uh, and see what stands out to us specifically in there. When I consider everything that grows, holds in perfection but a little moment, that this huge stage presenteth naught but shows whereon the stars in secret influence comment. So what stands out to you in this first stanza? I think I chose this sonnet actually specifically for the work with stars mm. that goes on, the infinite beauty of the constellations, the infinite nature of the universe, mm. whereon the stars in secret influence comment. Mm. You know? Yeah, it's kind of this idea of something greater than themselves, or mm -hmm. than this person, the, mm -hmm. the subject of their uh, attention, I guess. Mm -hmm. Did you know, Alberta is home to some of the world's largest dark sky preserves, meaning there's no artificial light around to obscure the extraterrestrial view. Yeah, 
And then does it make you think of any like animals or like like uh, music or TV shows or? Yeah, there. I think it's just again because of the word stars. Okay. But um, off of the Greatest Showman soundtrack, rewrite the stars. Right. Um, it's kind of that same idea of like giving the stars this power. Mm -hmm. You know, if we could rewrite them, maybe our love would be okay. Like, right. you know. And it, and it kind of there's a sense in there of like, I feel like with the stars, it, it often brings to mind like destiny and fate. And mm -hmm. do you think that this is like following in that, or is it kind of like? in defiance of that like it's like fate oh. would have it that you know we would pass on and not be remembered but yeah i'm going to defy that and you know capture your oh. essence is that yeah i hear what you're saying i don't have i don't know no no i don't know i guess we'll find out i guess yeah can we put a pin in that and use that later because i like that the tension there of For like sure. do you give it is this giving in or is it defiance right. yeah what color does this first stanza bring to mind for you? Like a midnight blue. Ooh, a midnight blue. Yeah. Is just, that just like a darker, deeper? Yeah, the, color? the color of like the night sky. Okay, okay. Because it just feels like you could get swallowed in it. Right. Kind of like how the, the narrator of this poem could get swallowed in the, the beauty of this person. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else in the, in the stanza that makes you think of that, that brings that color to mind? I guess a little bit would be like the huge stage presenteth mm. gives you that feeling of it could go on forever, but you're actually only ephemeral. Right. Like anything can happen, mm -hmm. but it's also fleeting. So like mm -hmm. midnight blue tis. Let's dive into the second stanza here, lines five through eight, and see what stands out to us specifically. When I perceive that men as plants increase, cheered and checked even by the selfsame sky, Vaunt in their youthful sap at height decrease, and wear their brave state out of memory. Right on. So what stands out to you in this second stanza? What does it make you think of? It makes me feel like I'm walking through a very calm forest in the morning. Interesting. Or even just outside in the coolies. Mm -hmm. You know, birds are chirping, maybe a chickadee or two. <laughs> Did you know? Lethbridge's first mosaic, The New Nature, was installed by Susan Day and features thousands of handmade ceramic and mirrored tiles. It creates a scene that allows viewers to reflect on their own relationship with nature and its role within a community. The idea of like basking in that. Basking, okay, basking in the moment. Yeah. And like being surrounded by or like really feeling your surroundings mm -hmm. and just being in the moment is mm -hmm. kind of what I'm hearing, yeah. What color does this second stanza make you think of? Light blue. Light blue. And what makes you settle on that? Is there something specific or just a feeling? I honestly think it's just the lead out from the midnight blue. That's where my heart says this goes. Light blue, it is. Let's dive into stanza three, lines nine through 12 and see what stands out to us specifically. Then the conceit of this inconstant stay sets you most rich in youth before my sight, where wasteful time debateth with decay to change your day of youth to sullied night. Right on. So uh, what stands out to you in this stanza? What does it make you think of? The wasteful time debateth with decay. Mm. I don't know. That just feels so heavy right. to me. And so there's something really rich in that for me. Don't know if that answers your question at all. No, absolutely. That stands <laughs> out to you. And that's kind of where we're introduced to this uh, character of time, right? Mm -hmm. Time is uh, um, capitalized, which is very significant, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it makes time a thing mm -hmm. rather than a, a concept. Yeah. Like time is maybe the enemy. Right. But all of a sudden, yeah, time takes on a role. Mm-hmm. It's almost the antagonist of the story. Absolutely, yeah. It brings up questions for me, like, you know, is time just doing its duty? Like, mm -hmm. doing, you know, what it's supposed to do? And, you know, but then we have to deal with that, I guess. Yeah. I almost have, like, this image in my head of, like, time and the Grim Reaper just, like, holding hands or, like, arm in arm, like, skipping through life. Right. You know? Yeah. Just little comrade comrades. They grew up together. Partner, yeah, partners in Best crime. Friends. Yeah. They played yeah. hopscotch, and now they've... Throw stones. 
<laughs> we should not be laughing about that. Well, I mean, you gotta have a sense of humor, I guess. Yeah, I guess. And, and what color does this stanza bring to mind for you? I think like a purple. Purple? Yeah. Any specific reason? I think it's because of the to change your day of youth to sullied night. Mm -hmm. So I day of youth makes me think of like a like a light pink, but then sullied night is a blue. Right. Or like a you know dark midnight blue like we've already used. So if I put those two together, I get purple in my brain. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And like I don't know. There's something very um, like purple is like often like a regal color. There's a bit of mystery to purple. Mm -hmm. For sure. Purple it is. Great, let's dive into the rhyming couplet at the end here, lines 13 and 14. And let's see what stands out for us. And all in war with time for love of you, as he takes from you, I engraft you new. Delicious. Yeah, what's it's so good? What stands out to you? What's so oh, good about it? What's delicious? I love, love, love the 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 singular word war with mm. time. Like war. That elicits so. That's such a. That's such a juicy poetic thing to say. Right. And all, all in war, like all of this, like everything I'm experiencing, accumulates to being in war with time. Right. There's another thought there for me that is mm -hmm. like, um, couldn't have done it without time either. Oh. Do you get where I'm going with yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. What I think I'm understanding, yeah. or maybe this is like my subjective jumping off point from what you're saying sure. is that like what makes the immortalization of someone in this poem so beautiful is that we ourselves are mortal what color does this stanza make you think of pink and i don't know why it's just a feeling but it was just pink and i think maybe it's because like war makes me think of red but then like i engraft you in new is such like a budding like that's such a budding color it's like you know time and this war that we're having with it isn't going to take from you but it's okay because like i'm going to keep giving right that last line like really makes it, yeah, hopeful. Pink tis. Stay tuned for the next episode where Daniel and Kat Rina shake up Sonnet 15. Two, three, four. Uh, uh, uh.